to Fantasy Island. Sweet desire, you can't deny. So the island is magic. I transform people's lives, almost always for the better. I'm you! I'm you! Captain? Rourke, you've been avoiding me. Hmm. To avoid you, I'd have to think of you, which I haven't. It's very nice to meet you. And uh, I'm very excited to, to talk to you because um, the series is, is fantastic. And um, how, did you, how did you become part of Fantasy Island? Oh, well, first off, thank you. Um, nice to meet you as well. And thanks for having me. I read the script and I felt like I really connected to the character. Um, and sometimes you do that, you know, sometimes you read something and, th and think like, yeah, this one really fits me. Uh, and oftentimes you don't, you know? So yeah, this one really fit me. I did the audition and felt really, really um, confident about it and comfortable about it. And I actually got a call about an hour later after I sent it to my manager. Uh, and they called me and said, hey, you know, we sent it to casting and casting loved it. And, um, you know, we're gonna send you on. So anyways, um, that happened and then um, I got word that I didn't book it and then another two months went by or a month and a half went by and then I got word that I did book it. I met with the producers and then I did book it. So it was about a, about a two month process there of like, hey, they love it. Hey, you're not right. <laughs> hey, they wanna see you again. And then, you know, hey, you got the role. So that's how it came to be. And how, how did you develop Javier? Because there is um, a lot, I feel like there is stuff about him we don't know. Yeah. And uh, I like that mysterious element, but I'm guessing that's hard when you create a character. I mean, do you know that part? Do you know the mysterious part? Or you just have to play with the fact that we don't know something about him? Yeah, there's some stuff that even I, you know, don't know about him yet, just because it hasn't been fleshed out from the writer's perspective. Um, but but this writer is, uh, is writing plenty about him, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I've definitely uh, tried to develop something, you know, that, that mysterious element about him. We kind of find out, um, you know, what's been harboring some pain in his past and how he's coming to terms with that. Uh, so, yeah, there was a lot of that element to it that had to do with it. And then kind of why he's on the island. What, what What's he doing? He, he was kind of he was running from his past and the island kind of provided him a place of refuge and um, so yeah so there's more of that to flesh out and uh, and hopefully we get a season two to you know to find out more but um, but yeah there's definitely some mysterious elements about him why is there you know what what exactly he's running from all that kind of stuff isn't that doesn't that apply to everybody who goes to the island that they are trying to escape something yeah, definitely. Um, and, and it's been said throughout the series that, you know, the island um, kind of chooses its guests. Uh, so it's the same way with uh, with Javier. You know, he was chosen to be there. And then, like I said, we kind of are starting to find out, you know, what what his past is dealing with and what he's um, what's becoming of his new life here on the island. Morning. Came with pastries. <laughs> Well, what happened to you? What is? Nothing. Uh huh. And you being here, there's nothing to you, right? Well, after the Day of the Dead, I wanted to spend time with the living. Hmm. I want to take you out on a date. Kiss you goodnight, or good morning, or both. I got to get the plane ready. Okay. And how is it working with Rosalind? I think she's so fantastic and so beautiful. <laughs> she's like yeah. a really beautiful woman. Uh, yeah. And also, I find it very intriguing that she is beautiful, she's powerful, yet yeah. she's a klutz when it comes to social communication. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, first off, Rosalind, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, she's, uh, she's very beautiful very talented um in fact when i first the first day on set you meet at the dock and we kind of have this um you know a little bit of banter back and forth and you know it's 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 and i hadn't met her before i'd seen her at the table read over zoom but that was it so um yeah that was a little you know my heart was beating a little fast you know i was like okay what's she gonna be like you know and uh but i went right up to her and and um you know introduced myself and, and we started talking and her and i right away you know, hit it off. And we, we kind of started laughing and talking with one another. And she's very, 
as 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 beautiful and as talented as a woman as she is, she's also very down to earth. Um, so, kind of made me made me made the cast made the crew everyone feel kind of at ease. Uh, so she's really easy to work with and fun. Everything in the universe is explainable. My fantasy is to experience something I can't explain through science. You always, when I'm watching a new episode, I always think, if I go to that island, what would my fantasy be? Um, so what would your fantasy be if you go to an island like that? Where you can do anything. <laughs> you know, I think my fantasy, um, I think my fantasies change because actually the more I see the episodes played out and I was reading the script, I thought, ooh, that would be kind of cool. You know, that would be kind of cool. The idea of, of switching bodies, I thought was very interesting. That's from episode two. Yeah. Um, the idea of being invisible, I think would be a super cool fantasy. I think that was episode three or four. Um, and just to kind of, um, you know, to hear people's conversations about you, you know, and they can't see you, you know, I think that would be, you know, really interesting to kind of play out. So there's so many of these fantasies that um, that I see and I think, oh, that's really interesting. Uh, that's intriguing, you know what I mean? So I have a lot, <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I am sure. I, I still yeah. can kind of pick mine. <laughs> We're taking you to the Bureau. You're safe. You don't have to be afraid anymore. Are you from California originally? Uh, hablas español? Uh, uh, muy poquito español. Um, I'm learning right now. I was in an interview and I guaranteed the interviewer that I would know Spanish if we came back for a second season. <laughs> so it is, you know, it's incumbent upon me to make sure I, I stay true to my word. Yeah, I'm not from California originally. I'm from Texas originally. Um, but California, I've lived in California now four different times over the last decade. Um, so California has always just spoken to me. I love this place. Um, I love the weather and I love to be out in the mountains and at the beach. That's, you know, this is home to me. I've, and it's, and I've always thrived one way or another in California. So. It's a beautiful place. Entonces, la próxima vez hacemos la entrevista en español. Next time, say three, yes. <laughs> Yes, definitely, definitely so. And you remember us coming to your house and asking you about that Marine. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's kind of why we want to talk rugs with you, Roy. Yeah, so my father um, is is Mexican and my mother was Caucasian, so, um, but I didn't, you know, that, it, my, my dad and my mother split when I was very young, so I wasn't around my father to teach me Spanish. Um, and when I would go visit him, my mother would always tell my father, she'd say, hey, teach him Spanish when he's with you. And me being this, you know, stubborn little kid that I was, nah, I don't want to learn Spanish, you know? So I never learned it. And then, um, and I've tried several times throughout my adult life to kind of go into it and learn it, but and it never stuck. But being on the island for three months and I, I asked the crew, I said, speak to me in Spanish as much as you can. And everyone spoke to me in Spanish. So I was kind of picking up little words here and there. But then I realized, like, I really want to be able to communicate with with these people, with my people, get a little closer to my, you know, ethnic um, roots, my heritage, you know. So now I, I'll ask my dad to speak to me in Spanish. And now, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to, to take lessons. And I want to learn. So next time we do the interview, I will definitely, we'll be doing this in Spanish for sure. There you go. See, that's a bet now <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's recorded. It's on camera again. It's on camera. You have to speak Spanish yep. for season two and for our next interview. <laughs> and that's going be in 20 years, okay? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, so my goal is to be conversational by, um, by Christmas. You're on. We'll, we'll hop on the phone or something and just start speaking in Spanish on Christmas. <laughs> you know? so. Exactly. And why actor? How how did you come to the conclusion you wanted to do this? When I was a little kid, I, I loved movies. Um, and I loved to watch the behind the scenes of movies. And I, I love to see how things are created, the storytelling, all this kind of stuff. I was just very intrigued by that as a young man. I was maybe six or seven years old. I created a movie poster. And it was, you know, starring, you know, John Gabriel Rodriguez as so-and-so and all this kind of, and I had my friends, you know, my friend was the director and such and such, another friend was the producer and all this stuff. So I was young and um, 
my friends and I always uh, would make little movies on, on VHS, home video, all that kind of stuff. Um, I just loved it. I always loved it. But I don't think that I necessarily fit into the the typical whatever the typical Hollywood you know thing is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a little different, and, and I've had other friends of mine who are actors who have told me that it's like, <laughs> you know, you don't really fit this. You know, the the what's typical, and, and I'm, I don't, but I still love it. I love I love doing my job on set as an actor, and then I love just being outdoors and spending time away from the whole scene um, of Hollywood. You work so long in this industry to get um, good opportunities and to get noticed. I mean, you know, so you can do more work and better work and work with better directors and better actors. And, you know, it's just it's what you do. So I believe that that's starting to happen for me. Um, and it's exciting. It's just an exciting time. But it's also, um, you know, I think that if this would have happened to me, you know, 10 years ago, I don't know if I would have been ready, but. You know, I've been in this game since 2007 now. And, I, you know, I've done a lot of work, but, you know, just little time over a little bit, you know, auditioning all the time and, you know, coming so close to something and then losing it. And it just, that's the way the business goes. Um, so when this came, I was not even expecting it at all. I just was like, you know, either you like me or you don't. I've been in this game long enough now and it doesn't really matter. To me. Like my life will go on if I don't book this role. And of course, when I booked it, I thought, oh, hell yeah, this is, <laughs> this is cool, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I choose most often times, like I said, you know, I'm in the mountains probably three days a week, three or four days a week. And oftentimes I'll put a book in my backpack and just go up on the highest point I could find and open the book and sit there for an hour and read and come back. And if I go on a trip, you know, um, I went on a trip about uh, two weeks ago or last weekend, I guess it was. And I was gone and just set up my tent and I have two options. I could either sleep in the back of my truck because I outfitted the back of my truck where I can kind of travel and have a bed and stuff back there. Or I can pop my tent up and that's what I love doing. And I just sat there and I had my tent out and my books and I just read looking at a mountain. I mean, to me, that's the most beautiful TV screen, you know, there is. That's what I want. So, but I will, um, I will watch, if someone recommends something to me, a good television show or a good movie, I'm, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. You know? Um, because books were also the initial thing for me that attracted me to stories and then movies came along. So, yeah, yeah. I have a great companion for hiking that I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Sleeping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it boy or girl? Boy, was it? Was it? And thank you for this. It's fun talking to you. You too. Have fun. Okay. See you later. Nice to meet you. Bye, bye bye. Nice to meet you. It's over. It's all over.